to say hello to her afterwards. Uh, with that, Lee Huff would like to come up and introduce our uh, distinguished alumni. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Lee Huff, and I'm a uh, former kindergarten to 12th grade student myself. I'm sat in your very chair, and uh, currently I'm the president of our alumni association. Um, as many of you know, we've sat through this before. We started this tradition a handful of years ago um, <clears throat> to recognize a graduate of North Cross who's gone on to do exciting things in their lives as a way to kind of showcase what North Cross students are capable of doing. And we had the idea that we would bring them back here to campus um, and let you meet them in person and interact with them and with the idea that it might inspire you to develop and pursue your own individual talents. And that can go in any direction. Um, our first recipient a few years ago was a nationally renowned uh, management consultant. Our second um, honoree was a internationally recognized chemist and recipient of the so-called um, Genius Award. Our third recipient was a nationally recognized um, labor attorney all over the country. <clears throat> and last year, we had an inter internationally recognized um, academic dean who was an expert in um, bullying. This year, our um, recipient is a New York Times best-selling author of four um, books. The most recent one is an inspiring story called uh, Code Girls about women in World War II um, that helped decipher and break the um, wartime code of the Axis powers. And that was an, you know, a key to our success in that, in that um, conflict. Um, she's also been a, um, uh, a critically acclaimed writer for a number of publications, the Washington Post and Time Magazine and others. Um, after graduating from North Cross, she went to Princeton and earned her undergraduate degree, and then went to um, UVA, University of Virginia, and earned a um, bachelor's degree in um, English literature. Um, I am proud to say that I have known um, Liza and her wonderful family for many years. Um, her older brother and I were good friends when we were here together. We played sports here, basketball and football here together, and later soccer. Um, her wonderful father is here today, uh, Marshall, and he is, you know, was the parent when I was a kid, and he's just a wonderful man and a, and a respected attorney and growing up for many years. Um, so it gives me great pleasure to introduce and, and Liza Mundy from the class of 1978 is this year's uh, Distinguished Alumni Award winner. for this meaningful award. Thank you all, all for, for coming out uh, today. Thanks to my dad and stepmother for coming and my wonderful teachers. It's so meaningful to see all of you here and classmates and um, friends like Polly. Uh, Polly Glenn, thank you for coming. Uh, I can't stand at a microphone at North Cross without remembering my senior speech, of course. Uh, everybody here, I think, knows what the senior speech is. You're probably, if you're in the ninth or 10th grade, you're probably already sort of worrying about it. It's a great experience. Uh, but what I remember is that after writing my senior paper and making it through that experience and then boiling it down to the speech and getting ready to talk about it and coming to the microphone, uh, something I know about myself now but I didn't know then is that I gesture a lot when I talk. Uh, and, and, and back then we didn't have water bottles. We didn't have water bottle technology yet. Uh, and so there was a little uh, cup of water sitting uh, right about here on the shelf. And at some point during my speech, as you can see I gesture, I, I knocked it over. Uh, and so the whole time during my speech, 
there was water dripping on my foot and then pooling out from under the podium. And my friend David Clark, who uh, had introduced the speech, was sitting there in the chair, I think sort of smiling to himself as he watched the water drip, drip, drip during my speech. Uh, and But both of us kept straight faces. Both of us made it through the speech. Uh, and I think that's just sort of one small example of the uh, both the really, really high academic standards at North Cross uh, and the sort of sense of humor uh, and persistence that you learn along the way as well to make it through the most difficult events uh, like your senior speech. And, and I can honestly say that my desire to be a writer was, was absolutely born and nurtured at North Cross. And I don't think that I would be a writer if I hadn't attended North Cross. Uh, I started in the 10th grade here, and I'll never forget taking Mr. one of Mr. DeHart's English classes, my first, very first semester here, and sitting on my couch at home reading Ray Bradbury's Dandelion Wine for homework. And I was a bookish kid. I had read kids, I had read books, you know, ever since I could read. That was my favorite thing to do. And the fact that I had homework was reading a book was so exciting to me. Uh, and, and the English classes at North Cross when I was there, all the classes were wonderful, but the English classes for me, a bookish kid, were amazing. And the writing classes, Valerie Nash's writing class, uh, uh, the creative writing class was so, was so cool. It was such a cool thing to do, to read books and to talk about literature, to read Native Son by Richard Wright, uh, to read Shakespeare. We had the most sophisticated reading list. We had the most sophisticated plays that Mr. DeHart would put on, uh, plays, you know, plays by Bertolt Brecht, my friend Kate Hughes singing uh, songs from Three Penny Opera. I mean, it was an extraordinarily advanced intellectual environment. Uh, and at the same time, there was a sense of joy and humor and, and supportiveness and, and a sense of being nurtured by your both your teachers. I realize now that our teachers were all about five years older than we were. You know, they seemed so old and mature, and I realize now they weren't at all. But, uh, but they were so nurturing and joyous, and the environment was so supportive, and it was so supportive of female leadership. Uh, I was president of the junior class when I was at North Cross, and I remember coming to school one day. I would, I'd been home sick that morning, and, and my friend Mark Cole said, oh, we elected you president of the junior class this morning. You know, I hope that's okay. And, uh, and it, it was that kind of environment that was so nurturing of female leadership. It was both intellectual and laid back at the same time. I remember, I don't know if Mr. Cook remembers this, but there wasn't a girls' soccer team yet at North Cross, and some of us wanted to play soccer, and we asked if we could be on the boys' team. He was like, yeah. Uh, and so, uh, and so, four or five of us played soccer on the boys' team. And then I think I remember actually Dr. Maycock, I think created a, a girls' team maybe during our senior year. And I'm afraid some of us still wanted to be on the boys' team. I think just because we wanted to be with the boys. And uh, and so, uh, so they, they let us they let us stay on the team. So it was just this incredibly nurturing, uh, simultaneously rigorous and casual atmosphere that was absolutely formative for me. Uh, I went on to Princeton after North Cross, and I have to say, you know, that was a great intellectual environment, but it was not as friendly and laid back and funny uh, as North Cross was, and I really felt nurtured and sustained by the, um, by the, the joyous uh, intellectual atmosphere that I had experienced at North Cross, and the aspirations that I had conceived at North Cross to become a writer. When I went to Princeton, I had to apply three times, even just to be allowed to take a creative, creative writing class, just to be admitted to a creative writing class. And, uh, and I did, I applied over and over again until they admitted me, and then I had a, a specialty in creative writing. Uh, and similarly, once I graduated, it was trying to find my way as a writer, which is a hard thing to do, because there's no, uh, it's not like getting a law degree, you get a law degree to become a lawyer. It, it's hard to find your way as a, as a writer and to figure out what kind of writing you want to do, how to get a job, how to get paid. Uh, and, and when I was applying for an internship at the Washington Post, again, I had to apply three years in a row uh, before I got an internship there and, and had a great experience. Um, but sort of learning the persistence 
uh, that I learned here and, and just the joy that I found in writing was very sustaining to me in my career uh, and learning to, really learning to accept failure, learning to accept rejection, uh, learning to accept that if you don't get admitted to that internship the first year, then apply again the next year. Uh, I think these are all uh, qualities that I learned at North Cross and, and, and was able to tap the, the joy in writing that was definitely born here, writing for, uh, for Mr. DeHart and for Valerie Nash and for the other teachers here. So I'm sure that that spirit still remains at North Cross and I hope that all of you will find it as sustaining as I did as you go forth in life. And, and I can say that in my most recent book, Code Girls, I felt like all of that came together. Um, one thing that I like to ask audiences that include younger, uh, younger audience members is, how many of you at some point in your life have created a secret code to communicate with a friend? Right, yeah. So, so this is one of the, um, and I, 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 when I have more time, I often like to ask the children what kind of codes they've developed because it's extraordinary uh, that the sophisticated code system that kids will develop to communicate generally, I think, with your friends. And it's when you want to communicate with somebody who's very special to you and you want to say something secret that nobody else can hear. And I know that if it's kids, uh, you know, the, the book that I wrote called Code Girls was about World War II when we were fighting a global war against enemies and everybody was using code systems to communicate. Military commanders were using code systems to communicate, politicians and diplomats, so that the enemy couldn't listen in. And I realized that the other group of people who like to create codes and ciphers are kids who want to communicate with each other, and the enemy, of course, is grown-ups, generally, in this case. Uh, and so that's a really universal human emotion uh, or human impulse to create a secret message system. And the experience of reporting Code Girls, uh, this is a book about 10,000 women who came to Washington during World War II to break the codes of the Japanese and Germans. Uh, and the reason that they got women to do this was because the men were fighting. And so uh, for the first time in American history, we really needed to use the talents of our educated women uh, to, to come to Washington. And it's very much like the story we've seen or read, Hidden Figures, about those mathematicians at NASA. It was very similar to that during World War II in terms of code breaking. But what was wonderful about this particular story is that many, many, many of the code breakers were actually school teachers, and they were school teachers from southwestern Virginia. They were recruiting from the south. So my central character came from Lynchburg. There were people who came from Roanoke. They had gone to colleges like Randolph Macon and Hollins. Uh, and so it was, for me, it was a real coming home in that I was applying the skills that I learned at North Cross and elsewhere in terms of reporting and writing, but I was also interviewing people who grew up in the same area, the same part of Virginia that I did, and I thought that it gave me, um, it, it gave me a, a feeling for them, for, for these women, many of them in their mid-90s, who had come forward to serve their country and had never talked about it. So I really feel as though for my entire adult life, both personally and professionally, I've drawn on uh, this region, the, the friendliness and the supportiveness and the sort of laid-backness of the Shenandoah Valley at Roanoke, uh, the, the, the human skills that we all learn in a community like this uh, have helped me as an interviewer, and then the love of writing that was born at North Cross and the sense of being nurtured and sustained by my teachers and by my classmates has absolutely gotten me through, uh, you know, the most the most difficult times in my career, and I think taught the values of persistence and of following what you love uh, as you make your way forward. So I think that you all are all very fortunate to be here at North Cross. I'm very very grateful uh, to this school for for everything that it's given me, and very grateful to my uh, to my beloved classmates and, and teachers who who came out today. So thank you so much, and thank you for the award. It's very.